morning. From Candy. We are staying at a place called the Shrine Inn, which is just a little bit outside of the center of town. And we had a little bit of an issue. It seems like there are two different guest rooms and we booked this based on the fact that there was amazing reviews for the quality of the Wi-Fi here. However, we checked into our room and discovered that there was no Wi-Fi. And we then went into the next room, which was open at the time and didn't have any guests in it. The Wi-Fi was working absolutely amazingly. Which is confusing because they're literally next door to one another. Exactly. So what they're doing with the router, who knows? So we basically ended up having a chat with the owner to hash it out. And they said, oh, you're fine to stay just for the one night, but for the next night, you got to move back into the room with no internet. So that's what we ended up doing. Yeah, we've done that this morning, but obviously it can't remain that way. So we are going to go out and explore today, but we are going to try and insist that they find a solution for the internet for later today. Yep, because at the end of the day, we still need to work and upload things and all of that kind of stuff. And we can't really do that without a connection. So. And it was advertised as having Wi-Fi. So it's a service that we feel like should be provided since we feel like we're paying for it. So there we go. Anyway, on a cheerier note, last night we went to this amazing restaurant. It is a five minute walk away from here and it had really good reviews, kind of like a hole in the wall place because everything else that I looked at seems to have candy prices in the sense that I guess this is a bigger city and it's just a little bit more expensive than the places we've been so far. Whereas this place offers excellent value for money and the food was amazing. So because of its proximity, its price and quality, we were like, well, we have to go back. And we noticed they had a breakfast special. So we're going to take you along and we're excited to try it. just finished the most delicious breakfast. Dinner was a really good indicator of what we were in for this morning. We had two rotis each, a fried egg, and it came with my absolute favorite coconut symbol, which I could literally eat that out of the pot with nothing else. There was also some kind of like dal curry that was really flavorful. Yep. And it was served with watermelon and bananas, and we washed it down with a coffee which wasn't even just like an instant Nescafe, it was a proper black coffee, all for 750 rupees each. So that cost three Canadian dollars each, which I think is a phenomenal deal, especially when you compare it to the other places that I looked up and how amazing it was. There is definitely one thing to note though, which is that when it comes to eating in this part of the world, then the expectation is to eat with your hands. So you may need to ask for cutlery separately if you want to, or you can go native. And generally most restaurants that do offer that kind of thing also have a sink where you can wash your hands before and after. But now we are heading to the main event of the candy, which is to go to the temple of the sacred tooth relic which I think is a Buddhist temple. It definitely is. And I believe it is another UNESCO World Heritage Site. We're just checking them off the list here. <laughs> is a little bit different to some of the other sites that we've been to so the first thing you do is you go straight through security then you're encouraged to take your shoes off so you deposit them at the counter and you get this token to then get it returned and so therefore you are encouraged to go with bare feet nice feet babe thanks darling after that you then go to a ticket kiosk you need exact change in order to go in but then once you do you get these two shiny tickets which for anybody outside of the south asia region costs 2000 lankan rupees each which is about eight dollars per person
so once upon a time in India, back in the somewhere between the 5th and the 6th century BC, a prince decided to denounce all of his royal titles and go seek enlightenment instead, which was then achieved. That person then became the awakened or enlightened one, or the Buddha, and so began Buddhism. When he died, it is so sad that some of his teeth were then passed on to various different kingdoms and were sought after relics. One of those relics then managed to find their way to Sri Lanka, where it got held by the royal families within Sri Lanka and got passed around the country for quite a while. In fact, it was such a sign of power that anybody who held the tooth was basically the reigning monarch at the time. It then eventually settled here at this temple in particular, which was then enclosed by the royal palace, and it basically has been here for the past 150 or so years. And this is despite the fact that this has taken damage from a couple of bombing attacks, both in 89 and 1998. But on each of those occasions, such was the significance of this place that it was restored perfectly to its former glory every time. With the ticket that you buy as a foreigner, you actually get access to a lot of this complex. You can see the royal palace, the shrine, the sacred tooth relic itself, and you get access to two different museums, which are pretty comprehensive. So I think we've probably spent two or three hours here. It is a very, very impressive place. And certainly the part where the shrine itself is housed is extremely ornate and very beautiful. It seems like this is a holy day or, well, a holiday of some kind in Sri Lanka because there is an awful lot of people here. This is definitely the most people that we have seen in our entire time in Sri Lanka so far. And I do agree that it's maybe kind of changed my perspective on this temple just in the sense that it is beautiful but i'm comparing it to all the other things that we've done in sri lanka so far and it probably ranks as my least favorite despite how pretty it is inside i just feel like it's not as grand or impressive as the other things we've done here but i mean that just tells you how lucky we are Definitely. I would say that actually the cost of the ticket is comparatively quite a bit, but what you get included in terms of all the exhibits and the museums and all that kind of stuff does mean that you end up spending a lot more time here than just seeing the shrine. And so with that then, it does feel like it is definitely still worth a visit because you actually get a grander context as to some of the rebuilding work that's gone into how it looks today as well as the shaping of buddhism around the world so from that perspective then yeah this is just a really interesting place to come to. yeah you get a decent history lesson mm -hmm. on buddhism and this temple absolutely but i would say that if you are tight on time in sri lanka that this would be the thing i would choose to skip over but I think the reason a lot of people don't skip over candy is because it seems to be quite a major travel hub. Mm -hmm. So people just figure, well, I might as well just stop by on my way through. However, I will say the surrounding area is absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. You are surrounded by natural beauty everywhere you go in Sri Lanka, even in a city the size of candy. As for what we're going to be up to now, then I think we're going to head via a grocery store to pick up some supplies and just have a light lunch. And then, um, yeah, I think we may pop out again for dinner. Probably back to the same restaurant because it was so good last night and it's cheap and it's close and we love it. We're just loyal. Exactly. And we'll take you along for that.
this bakery to pick up some lunch and also this kind of a milk tea. Let's give it a try. Oh my god, this is a massage high replacement. No jokes. We picked up fish pastries, a date muffin, and what they call a cheesecake for lunch. And then we have these four mini bananas left over. And the next time we will see will be for more food when we go out for dinner. We have of course come back to the same restaurant and I can't believe we haven't shown you this before, but we are having a very typical Sri Lankan dish tonight. It's called kotu and you can get it like vegetarian or non-vegetarian. I ordered mine with egg and vegetables. And I ordered mine with chicken. Basically what it is, is a roti that is cut up into very small pieces and then fried with said vegetables or meat or egg or whatever you order it with. Yeah, it's essentially like a stir fry but with roti as the base instead of rice and noodles. It is so, so good and we're excited to have it again. So we're going to enjoy this and then call it a night. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling. You get these two shiny tickets, which for anybody that is outside the South Asian, Asian anybody who is without this. This complex. It is a very, very impressive place. Yeah.